Hi, I'm Greg. Welcome to Affect Studio. I want to investigate the idea that someone can hear a difference in sound between types of batteries. I've heard a lot of people mock Eric Johnson for claiming to be able to tell what brand of battery is in his pedals. Let's find out if he's imagining it, has superhuman hearing, or if different brands or types of batteries really do change the tone of our pedals. Before I go on, please remember to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it and thanks to everybody that's done so already. For these tests, I have two carbon zinc batteries with an EverReady Red and Down Electro Vintage. The Down Electro website claims that alkaline batteries suck your tone. So I have two presumably tone sucking alkalines with an Energizer and Duracell, then external power with a True Tone One Spot and a Vintage Boss ACA power adapter. I have this Keith McMillan batter meter which tests the battery while in the pedals. The idea being to test them in the circuit under load. It gives you the voltage plus number of hours before it goes flat. You'll notice the voltages vary quite a bit between the batteries and pedals, as do the number of hours remaining. The number of hours remaining is based on the amount of current the pedal draws. I'm using a Kemper looper with the pedals in the effects loop, so the only variable will be the power source. I wouldn't have included the Boss adapter, but a couple of weeks ago I went to use the third pedal I ever bought, a Boss DM2 analog delay. I was powering it with a True Tone one spot. I plugged it in and the LED wouldn't light and then playing through it thought that after 42 years the pedal had died. Being one of my essential pedals I have a spare so I got that out and it sounded exactly the same as the first one. I own a pair of one spot supplies so I tried the other one and no change there either. Very confusing as I'd been using a delay powered by a one spot only a few days earlier and a chance that both power supplies or pedals would die at the same time seemed very slim. I contacted the knowledgeable people at True Tone and they explained that the DM2 actually needs around 12 volts when running on external power, which is what the Vintage Boss adapters put out. Modern regulated suppliers like the True Tone don't give it enough voltage. The pedals can be modified to work on regulated supplies and also will work as is if daisy chained with other pedals, which is how I'd been using it. So I dug out the Boss adapter and the delay sounded the same as ever. I haven't really used a battery in this, as when I bought it from my mate Anthony in 1986, he advised me to use it with an adapter as it flattened the batteries quickly. I have the delay and repeats up much higher than I usually would, so we're hearing if there's any change with the effect. You can clearly hear the difference in sound with the lower voltage from the one spot, which shouldn't be a surprise. I'm sure anybody who's used batteries to power our pedals and let them run down has heard the change in tone and response when putting in a fresh battery or plugging in an adapter. First pedal I bought was this Ibanez FL9 flanger. They used to come with a cheap battery and I remember the salesman telling me to unplug the pedal when not in use, which is obviously good advice anyway. Uh, he said that he'd flatten the battery by leaving it plugged in between sets.
I've been wanting to do this for a while, but it's becoming harder to find anything other than alkaline batteries around here these days. Other types were common until fairly recently. Thinking back, it's probably just that we had no money as teenagers, so we'd buy the cheapest batteries available, but I don't recall any of us using alkaline batteries when I started using effects in the early 80s. We used carbon zinc, which were the cheapest. I do remember changing batteries fairly frequently though. I looked up when alkaline 9 volts were introduced and it was the late 50s, so they'd been around for about 25 years at that point. Did we sound better? Definitely not, although that's unrelated to the type of battery we used. Let's try a couple of drive pedals. They don't draw as much power as a delay or flanger, but obviously you have a more harmonically complex tone. I have them on full or close to full gain, assuming they will be drawing the most power. Not sure what you're hearing through YouTube, but I'm noticing a pattern. It isn't related to the battery construction so much as the voltage produced. The energizer and one spot supply have the lowest voltages and seem to have a darker, softer sound in response. The two carbon zinc and Duracell alkaline put out higher voltages and give us a brighter, harder tone. You hear this even more with the Boss adapter which produces the highest voltage. The thing that fascinates me with that is that we're talking no more than 2 volts and mainly less than 1, so roughly a 10% variation. Eric Johnson's claims always made sense to me, not that I've spent enough time with batteries to be able to identify the type of battery, but I knew that the power supply affects the performance. As I mentioned, for years I used the cheapest batteries I could find until it was explained to me that alkaline batteries were more stable and lasted significantly longer and were therefore much better value. The batter meter agrees with this, big difference in predicted lifespan which is based on the current draw. I thought of carbon zinc being like an underpowered car, they're going to struggle going up long steep hills, where alkaline is a powerful car that will go up that hill with ease. Probably similar to the difference in response between an amp with a valve rectifier and a solid state one. So it wasn't a stretch to believe battery construction could change the way a pedal responds under load. So I modified two pedals so I could connect the multimeter to the battery and monitor any changes in voltage and current as sound ran through them. It could be that my meter doesn't respond fast enough, but no change visible, so my power sag theory doesn't hold. The less powerful car goes up the hill with the same force, it just runs out of power sooner. 
Even my oldest pedals are a relatively modern design. With things like fuzz faces that I understand Eric Johnson uses and are known to be very particular with input impedance, the idea of the power supply having a greater effect on the tone makes sense. It may well be no different to what we're hearing here though, and simply the change in voltages. So let's try one of the two fuzz pedals I own. Unfortunately I don't know much about this, it was a gift from Jeff D from Tone Frenzy who used to import my pedals into the US. <laughs> If the life remaining reading is to be believed, that one draws almost no current, while also dragging down the voltage. Other than the massive increase in background noise using the one spot, there wasn't any more or less change in tone than the others, it was still the same sort of difference. So does the type of battery construction affect the tone of our pedals? Yes, but only because different brands produce different voltages, which also means the tone will change as the battery loses charge. So carbon zinc will get darker and dirtier faster as the voltage decreases. It might be more significant than that if you are using a vintage fuzz, but even then I'm not convinced that it's any more than just a difference in the voltage. So as always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, please invite your friends along, and I hope to see you soon.